Well, kiddies, I'm afraid our designer hanger offer has expired. Would somebody please get Mr. De Laurenta out of here? Next up on the Home Chopping Network, it's time for the Crypt Keeper's Fashion Boutique. Today we're featuring my full line of Après V death care products. We've got everything from face scream to mascara. Try some. It's the best thing you can do for demise. <laughs> or maybe I could interest you in tonight's special. It's a tasteless tidbit about a traveling cemetery plot salesman who's about to make a grave mistake. I call it death of some salesman. <laughs> Eb Jones, come on down. You're up already. What time is it? Almost 6 a.m. Hashling in time. Hashling. I told you last night I'm through with that goddamn coffee shop. I'm going with you, isn't that what we said? Well, there's been a little change of plans. But we said last night. Last night was last night. So you lied to me. No. You said you wanted to get out of this stinking little burg. And I sold you a way to do it for the night. But now it's morning and the warranty's expired. Damn you. Oh, spare me the tears, okay, sweetheart? But you said you loved me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I said I loved you. And you dropped your little panties. It's called salesmanship. You must be Mrs. Jones. Uh, yes, I am. I'm Judd Campbell from the Restful Hills Memorial Park. You know you are exactly the way your husband said you are. Is he here? Well, no. Uh, he passed on a few days ago. The funeral was yesterday. I can't believe it. I, just last Monday I saw him. It's like he saw it coming. He did. He had cancer. Well, I know that, but Monday he puts a down payment on a new cemetery plot. And then suddenly... Did you say he put a down payment on a cemetery plot? $250 for both you and him. Oh, well, he didn't say anything about it to me. Well, he wanted it to be a surprise. He picked this spot right here. He wanted you to be among the first to enjoy eternal rest amidst all that beauty. Shame. He was so excited about the benefits package, too. Funeral expenses plus 10000 cash. He loved you so much. Ten thousand dollars? Yeah, I'll arrange for you to get a full refund when I get back to the office at the $250 deposit. Oh, but, um, isn't there some way that I could get the benefits? I don't see how. Your husband has already passed on. Well, what if I paid you the money? Oh, oh ma'am, that would be illegal. Oh, I don't see why. 
My husband intended to pay you the money. What if he'd already sent it? Now, look, I could pay you the money now, in cash, and who's to know when you got it? Uh. <laughs> oh, please. The funeral was so expensive, and Eb didn't leave me hardly a pig's whistle. Isn't there some way? How much did he owe you? Another $250. I don't know. I suppose if it were in cash. Oh, I'll get it for you. Boing. I'm afraid I... I only have $187, and that's all I got in the whole world. Isn't there some way... Mrs. Jones, you're such a nice lady. I'll find a way. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Can I help you? You must be Mrs. Comfrey. You know, you're exactly the way your husband said you were. He's a very lucky man. Mrs. who? Mrs. Comfrey? There's nobody here by that name. Well, well isn't this 2465 Maple Street? No. This here is Maple Drive. Maple Street is way across town. Oh, my mistake. End of the day, you know how it is. Young man. Are you selling something? As a matter of fact, because at Restful Hills, we believe that both you and your loved one should be able to rest in peace before as well as after. Oh, it sounds so nice. Now, I do have a lovely brochure that I'd like to... I'm sorry. I don't want Pa to miss this. Pa! <laughs> Where is that old goat? Where in turn nation are you? Hold your horses, Ma. Right in the middle of digging. Oh, we got company. Mr. Campbell's a salesman, Pa. A salesman? Huh. Ain't that nice? <laughs> in the old days, traveling salesmen used to come by all the time. Of course, nowadays, everybody stays home, does their shopping on the TV. Mm. I don't know, but to me, it just ain't the same. No. Well... Set yourself. Show us what you got. I know what you mean. Buying things long distance, you know, you lose that human connection. Ain't that the truth? And when the product comes... Shut it, Ma. The young man don't give a damn what you think. Let him get down to business. I'll do just that, sir. At Restful Hills Memorial Park. That's some kind of cemetery? We call ourselves a memorial park. What we do is a whole new concept that tries to bring peace to your loved ones both before and after your demise. <laughs> For starters, we found a piece of property north side of town that will just knock your socks off. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it sure is. It looks like the perfect place to spend eternity. It does look restful, doesn't it? It's the kind of place the whole family will enjoy coming to to pay their last respects, and that in turn makes the process of mourning just plain easier on everyone. Now, isn't that a nice idea, Pa? When does the beforehand stuff come in? That's, that's very smart, sir. The beforehand part comes with a death benefits package. Now, for a small nominal fee, we pay at the time of demise full funeral expenses plus a death benefit of $10,000 cash. That way, you know your loved ones are going to be taken care of beforehand. How nominal? $500 buys everything for the both of you. $500, that's all? Of course, we do have the extended death benefit of $20,000, and that'll only cost you $750. $750 buys you $20,000? No. 
You're both covered, so we're talking forty thousand dollars. <laughs> well, we can't say no to that, can we? We'll do it. Great. I'll drop the paperwork. Of course, we'll have to see it first. See, see what the cemetery plot looks like. We like to see a thing work before we buy it. Well, it um, it looks pretty much like this. Can't buy nothing till we see it first. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna submit your paperwork with the payment, and I'm gonna come back tomorrow. I'm gonna take you there myself. How does that sound? Sure thing. I expect you let me and Ma to go downstairs get you some money. You take cash. I prefer cash. It speeds up the process. Well, we won't be but a minute. You want some coffee or something? Yeah. Well, if you've been on the road all day, I expect you could use a little pick me up. <laughs> Come on now, Ma. We don't want to keep the young man. <laughs> Come in, Pa. I want him dead. He's dead, and that's all there is to it. Don't you raise your voice to me, old man, or I'll have your hat. Besides, it wouldn't be polite to kill him until he wakes up. Anyway, I think when Nona should have a look at him first. <laughs> Get off of it. He ain't gonna want her. <laughs> ain't nobody ever known his whole ugly goddamn life ever wanted her. I'd like her to be the judge of that. Hell, if she do want him, I don't. I don't want no goddamn salesman in the family. Nobody cares who you want in this family. Besides, only salesmen ever come to this place. And this one seemed especially nice. Oh, for Christ's sake. And if this is Winona's only chance at a little happiness, then I want to give it to her. Well, it ain't gonna happen. Because he ain't gonna want her. Hey, you. Wake up. Wake up, damn it. Ah, ah. He's up. Please let me go. Why? So you can run off to the police, tell them all about us. No, I won't say anything to anybody. I don't care about who those other guys are. About their salesmen, like you. <laughs> like that guy what sold us the crummy microwave. Didn't work. And the vacuum, and the color TV. <laughs> Wasn't no color TV till I fixed it. <laughs> Now it's color TV. Really? I wouldn't say anything to anybody. You can let me go. And why would I trust you? You're a salesman. And a salesman ain't nothing but a thief trying to sucker people out of their hard-earned money, making them buy things they neither want nor need. Well, we've been took one time too many. And if we have to kill every last goddamn salesman on the goddamn planet, so be it. Now, don't you get too excited, Pa. We ain't doing nothing till Winona sees him first. Uh, damn girls, nothing but trouble. Come on, Ma. Are you Winona? Winona is such a nice name. My my mother's name was Winona and she was very beautiful. 
You play that very well. Anyone ever tell you that? How, uh, how old are you? Old enough to know a bunch of bully shit when I hear it. Why don't you come on over here where I can see you? Maybe I don't want you to see me. <laughs> I don't think that's the case at all. I think you want me to see you very much. You know, I hardly know you, Winona. But I can hear your loneliness. I know that loneliness. It sits on my shoulder and it pecks at my heart. Is that how you feel, Winona? You sure do talk, Purdy. Well, let's you and me have a talk then, face to face. Okay. Face to face. Oh, you are so beautiful. The last thing I am is beautiful. <laughs> what is beauty anyway? But the Mona Lisa has nothing on you. What is that, um, that perfume you're wearing? Not wearing any. I ain't washed in a couple of weeks. That is so earthy. I love it. This has never happened to me before. I have fallen head over heels in love with you. You don't love me? No, I do. I do. Just take these off and let me prove it. I don't have the keys. I need me an idea. You gotta let me prove it. If you don't let me prove it to you, I swear I'm gonna go crazy. You really think I'm like the Mona Lisa? Who cares why the Mona Lisa is smiling that way? I want to know how to make you smile. I want to dedicate myself. To oh. oh, this is so lovely. I hate this room. I hate this whole house. <laughs> you know, it's strange how I feel now. Giddy. Like a kid. What are you doing? I want to see these love feelings. The kind of love I'm talking about, it's different. It's, it's deeper. Action's all I believe in. This love talk is very nice. But the body never lies. <laughs> now, let's see how much you love me. I swear I love you. Isn't that good enough? You still love me? So, show me you love me. Of course, if you don't love me, I'll just have to give you back to Powell and let him deal with you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Yeah. I didn't think you... Wait. Well, I'll be damned. I think you do love me. salesmen except none of them did what you did or like you did 
You do love me, don't you? Like you said, the body never lies. The question is, do you love me? Of course I love you. I ain't gonna let my daddy hurt huh? you if that's what you're worried about. Huh? I want to marry you. Huh? If we huh? got married, you'd get my dowry, and they'd let you go, and we could run away and be happy together. I hate it here. Mom and Pa treat me so mean. Did you say dowry? Yeah. Huh. Pa's got it buried in the basement. It's the money from all those salesmen. It must be forty, fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Yes, let's let's get married. <laughs> You really want to do this thing? Absolutely. I love your daughter. And I love him, Pa. Let's get this started. Aren't we going to have a preacher? Pa is a preacher. Do you, Judd Campbell, take my daughter, Winona Brackett, to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. And do you, Winona, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? You bet I do, Pa. Let's have the ring, Ma. Thank you. If you will place this ring on Winona. Wait a minute, Pa. Ain't you going to take these handcuffs off? He's marrying me. You think he's going to spend the rest of his life walking around with these things on? She's right, Pa. If he's willing to marry her... It's the least you can do. Well, I guess. No, I ain't gonna. I'll marry him to you, but that's as far as it goes. But... It's just the way it is, Winona. I'm still gonna have to shoot him. He's a salesman. He can't be trusted. Damn you, Pa! This is the first chance of happiness I got. And you will keep coming hell back. No! you, darling. Now, let's go get that dolly. present for you, my love. Ah. Ugly bitch. Sure is a mighty nice cemetery plot. But I, I 
the view ain't much, but I think he'll rest in peace just the same. Well, no, no. You gonna pay your respects or what? I sure hope I can get this fake blood out of my dress. Hope you throw it in the new washing machine that other nice salesman brought us. <laughs> You lied to me, all of you. Lied? Now, that ain't a nice thing to say. Besides, it weren't no lie at all. No, sir. It's called... <laughs> Salesmanship! Good old Judd. Just another satisfied ghostomer. <laughs> I guess it's true what they say. The family that slays together stays together. <laughs> we come now to one of my favorite items. The amazing Crypt Keeper slash o -matic. It's more than just a knife. It peels, it cuts, makes fabulous French fries. It slices, it dices, it... Ooh. to help me, Dr. Viscous. It's our son's eating habits. You said you were cannibals, right? Yes, that's why this vegetarianism thing scares me. No need to worry. For one thing, vegetarians are probably much better for him. I like to stalk one myself from time to time. <laughs> My advice is to let him fiend himself. The little nipper will never learn to maggot on his own if you're too busy protecting him. Our next caller, Leo, thinks his wife is cheating on him. Let's hope for her sake he doesn't catch her in the hacked. I call this sickening psychodrama as ye so. Here she is, exiting the produce market. I got eyes for Christ's sake. How'd you guy know she didn't go out the back for a quickie? I had a man in back and another one inside the store. Three guys, that's it. Three is all the FBI would use. Here she stops briefly at the butcher's. And her daily 10 o'clock visit to St. Xavier's. I paid you guys 30 grand for this shit. Home movies of my wife going in and out of stores and church. I told you when we undertook this job that it would be expensive. That we might come up with nothing. Particularly if your wife is up to nothing. Face it, Mr. Burns. Your wife is a regular choir girl. Just because you couldn't catch her at it doesn't mean she isn't doing it. I know she's up to some shit. I can feel it on the skin every time I touch her. I can see it in her eyes when she looks at me. She's tearing me apart for Christ's sake. You think I'm some kind of asshole, don't you? Look, Mr. Burns, when a guy marries a woman, what, 20, 25 years younger than he is? 24. 24. A pretty woman, it can get to him, uh, you know, emotionally. It can affect his judgment. What? You're telling me I need a shrink? Hmm? A marriage counselor might be a good investment for starters. Um, Encounter group, uh, health farm, spa. <laughs> Look, I don't need your new age bullshit. And I don't want any more of your half-assed surveillance either. I'm going to find somebody else who knows what the hell they're doing. Fine. You look under enough rocks, you'll come up with some sheet smeller who'll be happy to take your money. In your ear, pal. Your wife's very lovely. A catch for any man, married or not. I can only sympathize with your problem. I would, of course, give your case the highest priority. Mm -hmm. You know, those other guys were supposed to be the best in town. How do I know you're any good? You wouldn't go to an optometrist to get your kidney stones removed, would you? What kidney stones? I'm making a point. 
You went to a man whose expertise is in insurance fraud, embezzling, that sort of thing. And for this, Chapman is very good. I'd go to him. But infidelity is another kettle of fish. He was insensitive to your suspicions, correct? They may feel like a fucking asshole. Then they were the assholes. In my substantial experience, a man or woman's suspicions about their other half are invariably correct. Things betray. A mouth that hesitates to answer a question. A shoulder that cringes to the touch. Eyes that have to look away. Things that he might not even be able to put into words, but nevertheless are a smoke signal that something is going on. And where there's smoke, there's fucking fire. Exactly. Mr. Byrne, when did you first suspect your wife was having an affair? A couple of months ago. You know, when she, when she stopped. Stopped having conjugal relations with you. Oh, Christ. It's not like it's something you can talk about. Tell me, Mr. Byrne. Does your wife wear easy access clothing? What? Does she wear full or pleated skirts? Stretch pants that just slip over the hips? Does she prefer garter belts to pantyhose? I don't know. You're in the dry cleaning business and you don't notice your wife's clothing? I know about clothing. I don't know about that. What are you trying to tell me? All I'm saying is you ought to think about these things. Mr. Byrne, I don't know yet if your wife is having an affair or not. But we do have a saying in this business. If you're not getting it, someone else is. So. Shall we get to work? Lingerie. I know that. I mean, what is this, this here, eh? What do you think it is? Well, I want you to tell me that. It's a going to the loom. Is there anything else you want to know about me under things? Look. Oh. Really? It's for that? Hmm? What a silly question. What else would it be for, eh? Well, uh... Leo, look at this mess. Darling. You know, since, since we're both home. Hmm? Not hmm? now, Leo. Come on, it's been such a long time. Hmm? You know the time is a week away when you can do your dirty business. Uh, no, I, don't, I don't want to wait a week. I want it now. Leo. No, no Leo. Come on. No. no. Come on. Leo, no. No. It's only been a week. You got something for me already? For a professional, a week's enough. This is the same shit as the other guy got. Is it? Take a look at the last two again. Carefully. So, so what's this? So she's happier coming out than when she went in. Big deal. I mean, she's been spiritually uplifted. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm sorry, Mr. Byrne, but what young woman in this day and age goes to mass every day? But she's from Ireland. They all do that over there. Do you know that they do that? Or does she just say that they do that? I'm not sure. So, all right, so who's this? 
Have you think? It's him. A priest. She's banging a priest, for Christ's sake. Are you out of your mind? Am I? His name is Father John Sajak. He's a radical. He was fired from his last position for disobeying the Pope's encyclical on contraception. Now take another look at that picture of your wife leaving the church. out for yourself. Talk to the man. He'll be able to tell. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Yeah, where's Father Sajak? He's up in the choir loft. Thanks. Whenever I'm uh, struggling with a sermon, I find that playing a little music helps smooth the way. Can I help you? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I just moved into the neighborhood, and I thought I'd check out your parish. My wife and me and the kids. Ah, family man. That's nice to hear that. Mr. Leo. Leone. I'm John Sajak. Father? Why is it nice to hear that? Well, we have a lot of overstressed young professionals here in the flock, and unstable relationships and all the issues that are connected to that are part of the inevitability I have to deal with. Sometimes it's just nice for... Roll that back a minute. What issues? Well, premarital sex, marital infidelity, Contraception, abortion, divorce, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, when I grew up, that kind of shit, that stuff, was immoral, pure and simple. It's not in your book? Well, Mr. Leone, it's my opinion that the church has to acknowledge contemporary values and problems or else it ceases to be of any value to the people. Now, it's my goal to reestablish the Catholic Church as a living, potent organ, throbbing with vitality. Bursting with life. Now, I want to embrace the people as they are, with all their contemporary problems, take them in my arms and hold them, and say, hey, it's okay to be you. Now, you'll excuse me, I have to uh, hear a confession. Excuse me, Father, what do you call that you're wearing? That, that, that... This is a cassock. Why do you wear that instead of a suit? Well, it's more comfortable. Uh... Not to mention the fact that sometimes it comes in handy. Excuse me. Father, for I have sinned. My last confession was a week ago, and since then I have had impure thoughts. And what were those thoughts? That I am a wicked whore, worthless in God's eyes. Okay. It's okay to be you. Please. 
should be a dominant. Come on, of us, he is a god in the blood. Come on, it's Holy man! I never I got your living potent organ, you son of a bitch! Face the facts, Mrs. Bryan. Your worst suspicions are true. But I don't want it to be over between Bridget and me. I still love her. I'm not a marriage counselor, but offhand I'd say it's already over between you. Under the present circumstances, that is. Maybe it's time to see a lawyer. No, 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 no lawyer. I can still get her back. It's just that fucking priest. Why did you come back here? What do you want, really? What do you mean? Why did you just say it? You want the priest dead? Yeah. That's right. I want the priest dead. I want the son of a bitch shot in his dick, then in his ear. And I want Bridget to be there when it happens. That's a tall order, Mr. Byrne. Forget it. But not too tall. If you have the money. How much? A fraction of what the divorce would cost. Fifty thousand dollars for the people. You got it. And another fifty for me. All in advance and to be left in a place of my choosing. In advance? What, do I look like a moron or something? I'll overlook the implications of that, Mr. Byrne, because you have been under a great deal of stress. Forget I mentioned it. Forgotten. Once you leave here tonight, I never want to see you or hear from you again. Just go about your business as conspicuously as possible. Go places, see people, make a lot of noise. Forget all about this. Yeah. But when will it happen? Maybe a week, maybe a month. But it will be handled. The less you know, the better. Now, what do you say? In his ear. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Hmm. That's good. Sorry, Bridge. Theo, I, I feel like you're angry at me, and I really don't know why. It's nothing. It's nothing, 
Leo, I'm really tired. Night night. Bridget. Bridget! I can't take this! Father, are you there? Father? Yes, one moment, please. Just one moment. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. My last confession was a week ago. So, what are your sins? If you have to seek absolution, you have to tell me your sins. I've been a bad... No, no, I've been a terrible wife. A liar who has caused my husband too much suffering. What did you lie about? My reasons why I don't perform the duties of a wife more often. Why didn't you do that? I've wanted to tell him, Father, so many times, but I was afraid he wouldn't understand. You see... My mother died giving birth, and I'm so afraid it would happen to me if ever I got pregnant. I just... Wait. Wait, wait a minute. Is that it? Yes. I'm truly penitent in my heart, and I'm ready to make an act of contrition if only you can grant me absolution. You didn't do it. You didn't do it. Leo? Oh, Bridget. It's me, Bridge. Bridge, come on, get out of there. Oh, Leo. Leo. 
It doesn't What were you doing in there? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all right, baby. All is forgiven. It's all right. Let go of her, father. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, this isn't what it looks like. See, look, look. I'm, I'm, I'm no priest. I'm the guy who hired you. And I don't need you anymore. You're... In your ear, father. of the hour. Time for your favorite morning man. <laughs> What's the matter? You've never seen a shock jock before? will do fine. Greetings, fashion fiends. So glad you could join me. Bet you didn't know your pal the Crypt Keeper dabbled in photography. I just love winding a few rolls of Codagrone into my camera, turning on the old fright meter and snapping off a few head shots. <laughs> Tonight's putrid picture is sure to increase your shudder speed. It's about a photographer who's losing his touch and would do almost anything to get it back. Did I say almost? I call this sickening snapshot Forever Ambergris. Be honest with me, all right? Just, you know, what do you think? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. I mean, you got your basic mother with dead child. Yeah, not bad. You want to see mine? Yeah, sure. Hey, these are good, man. Come on, Ike. I prefer to jerk myself off if you don't mind. They're fucking shit. <laughs> Never see any of my old stuff. <sighs> seen it? Man, I studied it. The one from Tonkin with the soldiers at Bien Ho, the one that got you the Robert Capo Award, I got that hanging in my bedroom. And the one in 69 with the Buddhist bonds who set himself on fire in protest of the M. Ike. I was seven years old when I saw that, man. I, I like stared at it for days. And, and the one from Lebanon with the kid with the deformed Ike, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, you know, I think I've lost it. No way, man, not you. Come on, you're Dalton Scott. You're the greatest. Shut the fuck up, Ike. Hey, what's that smell? It's sweet balsam. It's good for incense. They got good incense in Iraq. 
I bring some back every assignment for my girl. Is that Bobby? Yeah, you really gotta meet her sometime, Dalton. Hey, maybe this trip you can come by for dinner some night. Oh, come on. Back in the world for two weeks. All the girls on the beaches of San Diego waiting for me. I'm gonna come and have a cozy dinner with you and your house, Frau. Well, look, you change your mind. Bobby's the kind of girl that can make you forget that shitstorm back there just by the way she crinkles her brow, I swear. <laughs> yeah, well, deep six of stinky stuff, eh? I make me sick. <laughs> you sure you don't want some of this? All right. Thanks, man. What am I looking at? What is this? I mean, I don't know what I'm looking at. Look at this, and uh, I don't know what I'm looking at. This looks like it was shot by my nephew with his Instamatic. And this isn't the first. Randolph. I was telling my guy at the Times, Dalton Scott, in his prime, could capture the horrors of an entire war in the face of a child. Now, all of a sudden, that said, uh, you're my nephew? Randolph, I'm working on something really big. I got a tip. Where? Central America. Central America is so 80s, Dalton. Yeah, but this is something really special. I'm going out with a guerrilla back mercenary unit. Have you seen this stuff? Isaac Forty? This kid is a star. This kid is you 20 years ago. Before Beirut and Panama and Afghanistan to turn you into my nephew. I hate to think of the baton being passed, Dalton, and you only 45 years old. Bollocks. You're going down soon? Yeah, Friday. Bring me back something large, Dalton. Break my heart. Break it in two. And, of course, you take the Forte kid with you. Yeah, of course. Oh, excuse me. I'm looking for Isaac Forty. You found him. Bobby? Mm -hmm. Hey, Dalton! <laughs> oh, wow, man, I never thought you'd come. Dalton, this, this, is, this is Bobby. Bobby, this is, this is Dalton Scott, the guy I'm always talking yeah. about. Well, I feel like I know you already. Hey, hey, come on in. Come on in. You're just in time for supper. Wow, this is great. with the guy. He's my boss. You have to. Come on. He hasn't seen blonde hair in three months. He's going nuts. Come on. I come fine. What? It's all right. Just a little dance. Okay, don't dance. It's okay. It's okay. Don't she don't dance. mind. Come on. Don't dance. Come on. You dance. Everybody dances. Bobby's a great dancer. He'll show you how. I gotta pee. Is this okay with you? Yeah. He's drunk. He's home. No offense, but you don't seem the type of girl to go with a guy like Ike. Really? Combat photographer? Well, why not? I think spiritualism is the highest form of political protest, you know? Isaac sees things like nobody. He has the eye. We were out hiking once, and we found this dead possum. Been dead for days, decayed, swimming with maggots. It's horrible. Yet Isaac thought it was like lovely. He he dug it. He tripped on the maggots on the life growing within the context of death he finds beauty even in the most grotesque things that is his gift hey everybody having fun yeah having a ball
Hi. Woo. You know, I haven't smoked this shit since the Falklands. It relaxes me. Especially after an intense fuck. <clears throat> you like to watch, don't you, Dalton? Excuse me? Oh, you know, photographers. They watch while others do. Yeah, that's right. So what do you do when Ike's away? Oh, the usual wartime widow stuff. You must get very lonely. Sure, but we all have to make sacrifices. Ike and me, we're in a pretty dangerous racket. Now, if I had a girl like you at home, I wouldn't be out there risking my neck for a few lousy pictures. What if he doesn't come back? I don't want to think about it. Yeah, but what if he doesn't? I'd probably die myself. Now, that would be a tragedy. Don't. What's up? You're very strong and you're very attractive. Isaac worships you, but you see, Dalton, I worship Isaac. Take care of him for me. seen you since Libya, Dalton. What brings you down here? It's the only game in town. I need something big to get me back into it. I'm a horse hair away from taking high school graduation pictures. <laughs> Say cheese, Skippy. <laughs> Same old rock. I hear nice things about Valmalera. Valmalera? Campesino village was. There's nothing left of it now. Where it is, it makes me lie, look like a junior prom. Of course, that's strictly classified. Is that it? None of the campesinos killed were shot or fragged. They found canisters here. That ain't gonna be easy to get to. Oh, it'll be easy to get to. It just ain't gonna be easy to leave. The village is contaminated. Joe Wolfe. Dalton, you go to Vamalera, you take your pictures, and you don't come back. <laughs> I'll come back. Be lucky. Yeah, go let you go get it, all right? I'll show her a thing or two. Let's get it together, man. The ghosts are out there. I can feel them. Yo, you got to excuse Uncle Salty, man. He's one of those still in Saigon, Charlie's in the wire. Come on, baby, light my fire, motherfucker. <laughs> there he is, Dalton Scott. Die for his camera, Mercs. Bleed for the front page. What the fuck is your problem, Salucci? You. You're the only guy I know who uses the great American fighting man like a five dollar throw being a whore. <laughs> You're the one spreading your legs for the highest bidder. I'm just here to record your position. Yeah, relax, boys, relax. <laughs> anyway, to make you happy, I ain't going out with you today. I kiss. I'm going down to Vamalera. Vamalera? Well, you know about it. Hey, Dalton. He said it was real bad, man. Said the dead looked like they'd been put through a blender. Sounds right up your alley. Nobody does human suffering like Dalton Scott, right? Right! Hey, Dalton. 
Can I go with you? No way, man. One of us has got to go out with the mercs. If we don't get some combat shots, Randall's going to have my balls. Well, maybe... What? Maybe you can go with the mercs and I can go to Bamalera. You little fuck. What? You play that all shucks thing just like a fucking pro. The truth is you're a jackal. Just trying to deprive me of one last walk in the sun. No, man, that ain't it. This is my last chance to get back to where I was at the start of this fucking pig circus. And you're gonna take it away from me? No way. Hey, Dalton, come on, man. You said it yourself about, about being too jaded. And this is like an opportunity. We'd share the shots. <laughs> share the shots. Share the fucking shots! Get out of my face. You go. Hey, I'm sorry, ma'am. Go. You're right, you can capture it much better than me. You can share. So go get it, Ike. Get it good. Hey, thanks, Dalton. Change of plans, men. I'm coming with you. Ike's going to Vamalera. You're sending him alone? Yeah, well, you can send one of your guys with him if you like. Makes you feel better since Salucci. Fuck you. A Salucci goes with us. But you run into anything, you lay chili. And you get back here, Didi Mao. Hey, I'll be cool. I'll shoot him with this. Let's move out, guys. Hey, Uncle Sol, tell me. Is this the uh, one where the good government's fighting the bad gorillas, or the bad government's fighting the good gorillas? Oh, shit. What are you talking about? We've been out all day. We ain't get, see no hooch, no nothing. Waste of time. I'll tell you what. You guys are getting fat and lazy, man. You need the exercise. I'll tell you what. Huh? Pirate, I want my fucking penthouse back. Yeah, I'm going to keep it down, down in your tank, you little prick. <laughs> Hey, I was getting worried. You have any trouble? Nope. You? It was unbelievable, Dalton. I swear to God, I've never seen anything like it in my whole life. It was like, it was like haunted, man. Whatever artillery hit these people hit them hard. It was crazy vegetation, spooky-ass bugs, smoking fire still burning. I'm just writing Bobby a postcard now, telling him about it. But you gotta see it, Dalton. I mean, even you can get a good shot. I mean, it was amazing. Amazing, huh? Yeah. You got some good shots? Oh, man, I got some brilliant shots. We're gonna hit them all, man. Time, Newsweek, New York, freaking Post. <laughs> I'm gonna get Salucci. See if I can't get these off in the next mail. You don't. War might be hell, but God, sure makes you sleep good. In there, man. I just got some kind of fever. What well, should we call a medic? No, man, no, no. It's okay. I'll take care of you. No, what's up in there, man? I'll take care of you, man. All right. All right. Radio for a medic. We're gonna chop you at a base camp hospital. 
And if the doctors think it's necessary, they can get you in Managua in eight hours. Oh, it burns! It burns! Oh. And I tell you something. Oh. <laughs> you look like shit. Really? You're starting to look like the house salad, dressing on the side. Oh, Valera. You got it, brother. Those peasants weren't killed by no artillery round. Ah. <laughs> You're deep in the herd locker now. Why? Why do you think, Isaac? Why? I'm on the comeback trail. <laughs> and who would look after that sweet little girl of yours? Bobby. There goes that wonderful eye of yours. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna get me some fresh air. No offense, brother, but you're starting to get a, a little ripe. <laughs> Back in the Nam, I knew a Lance Corporal. Echo Company, 3rd Battalion, Contien. And one night he gets a small case of the rot. Woke up in the morning, a bugs had eaten his nose off. Spent the rest of the day combing the deep, hairy bush for bugs. And every bug he'd find, he'd cut it open. Looking to put his nose back together. I think he must have picked up something in Vamalera. Yeah, I bet he did. Amazing, isn't it? How it could have been you. Jesus fucking Christ. Good Christ. God, it's contagious. He was coming straight at us. What are we gonna do, Sarge? I don't know. I just don't know. We burn it. We can't risk contamination. You son of a bitch. What are we gonna do, Sarge? I think he's right. We burn it, most Ricky Tick. I've been covering the war racket since Inchon, and I've never seen such horror. You got it back, Dalton. You got it back. You got another capo award for this stuff. Too bad about Forte, though. Kid was good. Kid was real good. War is hell, Randolph. He's a lovely. Thank you, Dalton. It was the least I could do. This came from Isaac yesterday. It was weird reading his postcard, knowing it was written by a dead man. You were nice to give him that last assignment. He was very grateful. You were there. Did he suffer? No. He went very, very peacefully. There was this letter came with his postcard and packages. It was a crazy letter saying how you sent him to that village knowing he'd get sick. How Isaac took the pictures, you didn't. How after he was sick, you shot him dead.
goes from a Dominic Salucci. I didn't believe it. I still don't. I know you bullied Isaac, but I know you really loved him. I loved him like a brother. gets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl and goes to pieces over her. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know, kiddies, that things turned out pretty well for Bobby. She got herself a job and started modeling for Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Turn your head a little more toward me. Just a little more. Little more. Ah, perfect. <laughs> hmm. Frankly, your hat rays look terrible. You've got to pay closer attention to your oral hygiene. Or you'll end up looking like me. I want you to brush after every meal, floss and gargoyle twice a day. Hmm. Yes, looks like I'll have to drill. This won't hurt me a bit. <laughs> In the meantime, to take your mind off the pain, I've got a little dose of phytrous oxide for you. It's about a sideshow mind reader who's lost his head over a pretty girl. I call it food for thought. <laughs>
I am. Well, concentrate harder. I'm tired. Why do you need to read my thoughts? I read yours. Isn't that enough? God damn it, Connie. You're making me angry. Is that what you want? You want to change that. Is that what you want? I don't want to change anything. I just want to taste your mind. Everything's food to you. Because everything is food. And your mind is the morsel that I crave. I want you to concentrate, Connie. Go on. Is it, um, is, is it something on the bed? Is that, is that what you think? No. No, no. Ah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Um. Ah. Is it, um. Is it an object? Kind of. Kind of? Honey, you're going to teach me how to read your mind. You hear me? I can't. I don't know how to send you my thoughts. You know how to. The problem is, you just don't want to. Remember how it was when I found you? Living in the middle of nowhere. Poor, pathetic. And this is better. A lot, you know it. Mm. Mm. It's good. Can you use a big warm? Brandy, yes. My mother. She used to make a, a roast pig that tasted like this. We still dream of it. Yeah. Oh, but you can't leave now. Zambini wants his dessert. His very special dessert. The kind that only Connie can give. Not tonight. Yes, tonight and every night. You know you can't deny me. My hands are on you, Connie. My mouth is at your breast. Don't do that. You just so... Good. I could eat every drop of you. I want my dessert. Bring me my dessert. That's right. That's right. You've been a very bad girl, Connie. And just for that, you're going to have to do something extra special for Zambini. You know what that means? Zambini wants his favorite treat. Oh, yes. Good girl. And Connie. No stopping this time. You're finished when Zambini says. You're finished. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the great Zambini. assistant and I shall perform an amazing demonstration of psychic power. For I have traveled all over the world, been the subject of experiments by the greatest minds, all trying to comprehend the amazing feats you are about to witness tonight. And now, presenting Sultana! And now, I shall broadcast my thoughts. And Sultana shall, in a manner of speaking, be my radio. Well, if she's a radio, I want to twist her dials. <laughs> <laughs> Very amusing, my friend. Now, Sultana. Although your eyes are blindfolded, can you tell me what my friend is wearing? He is wearing a pair of dirty...
dirty underwear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid we'll have to take your word for that, Sultana. But I do know that there's something in my friend's pocket. Sultana, I want you to concentrate. Listen to my thoughts. It's a Bible, a little Bible. Yes, it is a Bible, a Bible. Now, my friend, would you pick a passage, a verse? Hmm. And now, Sultana, I am looking at a passage. Can you tell me what that passage is? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. She's absolutely right! And now, for our next attraction to the they finished yet? Soon enough. <clears throat> Damn, I hate these things. Hey, Nabonga, what a peanut! <laughs> What's the matter? Peanuts too good for you? <laughs> hey, I'm talking to you. Leave her alone. I ain't hurting her. She's just a dumb old gorilla anyway. I said leave her alone. She's got enough troubles without you teasing her. It's okay. Girl. It's a great crowd. Dirty underwear. <laughs> that was rich, Connie. It didn't really shut up that room. It weren't me. It was Sam Beanie. Yeah, right. Come on, Connie. We didn't pay no dime to see your act. Pretending Zambini's for real. Because he is. <laughs> right. She must think we're a bunch of rubes, too. That's because you are a bunch of rubes. Let's go, Connie. We have better things to do than waste our time talking to these lowlifes. I want to stay. I didn't ask you what you wanted. It's time for dinner. Let's go. Hey, she wants to stay. She can stay. You'd do better to mind your own damn business, boy. Let's go. And I'm not going to ask you again. you look tonight just didn't get the chance that's sweet of you no that's the truth that you're sweet or that i'm pretty <laughs> both <laughs> i'm getting out of here connie i've about had it with the sideshow i got a cousin he lives in st louis he works for the government he says there's jobs. Probably one for you, too, if you're interested. For me? I got a feeling you don't want to be here, either. I was going to ask you if you wanted to come away with me. I mean it. I can't stand the way that son of a bitch treats you. You deserve a lot better. What? 
There ain't no way when it comes to Zambini. He's got a power you don't understand. Connie, come on. You're going to start with that telepathy mumbo jumbo stuff again. I, mean... I know you ain't afraid of nothing, but you should be afraid of him. Huh, what's she going to do? Sit on me? Why do you think he wears that makeup all the time? A fat face full of gin blossoms? I'd wear makeup too. I'm being serious. One night on our honeymoon, he got drunk and told me how he beat up his last assistant. Put her on ice is what I'm thinking. Oh, charming story to tell your blushing bride. But then it makes sense to me. He's stuck in the cops, so he wears that Zambini makeup as a disguise. A little while ago, he cracked and started wearing it all the time. He's cracked all right. I just don't want him to hurt you. You know what's hurting me? I want you so much. snoring like a fat, stinking pig. Oh, how you abuse me. And on this, the night of our greatest triumph. Oh, Connie, tonight, just minutes ago, I swear, I heard your thoughts. Oh, Connie, tonight, I read your mind. No, I don't believe you. I saw fire. No, I don't want you to read my thoughts. Something to hide. You're hurting me. Oh, I'm just beginning. I said you weren't feeling well. That son of a bitch. He did that to you, didn't he? It's okay. No, it's not. I don't care what he does anymore. I'm not afraid. I'm going with you. What? I'm going with you. Are you sure? All I know is I can't get you out of my mind. We'll leave at dawn when everybody else is asleep. How you doing, girl? 
Come here. You doing okay? Look what I got you. Nice and right, just like you like it. I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm gonna miss you. You're gonna be the only thing I miss in this place. Teaching you a lesson, Buck. You play with fire, you get burned. No! something to eat. Go to hell. Oh, come on, Connie. Where do you think you're going? I don't care. As long as it's without you. Don't you open the door. You're mine. Nabonga ate it all. You know what they say, kiddies. A mind's a terrible thing to waste. Maybe she saved some for breakfast and had it in a brain muffin. <laughs> I'm afraid it's going to have to come out. Oh, yes, it does. Now put your head back. Open wider. Wider. 
Got it. They don't call me the Tooth Scary for nothing. <laughs> Chop him to the left! Chop him to the right! Chop him every chance you get! Fright, fright, fright! All right, creeps, it's fourth and ghoul. They're probably expecting us to run a ghost pattern, so let's run a scream pass instead! <laughs> of course, I could pull out a few other surprises from my playbook, like tonight's tale. It's about a couple of brothers who are planning a little high scaring of their own. In a nasty bit of offense, I call... People who live in brass hearses. Drank all the Hawaiian punch? I don't know. Butter? Frank and Jesse James ever plan the warehouse robbery? Maybe. An uh, ice cream warehouse, Billy, you think, maybe? No, not an ice cream warehouse, little brother. Well, we're still a lot like Frank and Jesse James, ain't we, Billy? Yeah, kind of. Shut up. I'm watching this. And of course, Frank and Jesse James rode horses, and we drive around an Impala, but an Impala is a kind of horse, right, Billy, ain't it? Hey! Enough of this Jesse James shit! Forget about him, he was a wussy! Did he ever do two years of San Quentin like I did, did he? No, Billy. Oh, shit, Virg, you know what? No, I didn't mean that. You know that, right? Right? Hey, come on. Come on now. Who's your big brother, huh? Huh? Who's always looking out for you, huh? You are barely here to bed. <laughs> you goddamn right I am. Now, come on. What's with all the questions about the gig tomorrow? You getting nervous? Oh, Billy, I know what to do. Well, good, because we can't afford any fuck-ups in the can well, we? sure can't. That'd be trouble. That'd be big trouble. Yeah, big trouble. So let's go over it one more time. Who's on your shift? Uh, well, Tom and Cooter. All right, and what's the first thing you're going to do when you get in there? Gail, little Tom, to go pick up the transfer over at 41 right away. And if he gives you any grief? Tell him that the call came down from the district super. And then I'll wait for Cooter to go on his break, and then, and, and then, um, um, unlock the door. Maybe. No! God! You disengage the fire alarm, then you Come unlock on, the right. door. You got it? Right. Please tell me you got it. Right, right, I'm sorry. I'll remember, Billy, I promise, I promise. Good. Let's hope so. All right, all right, enough of that. Get your shirt on. 
One thing I want to do before the shit hits the fan tomorrow. What's that, Billy? Eat a little ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> change no matter how long you've been away. We'll meet again, Mr. Bryant. Patience, my little friend! Patience! Remember, there's a method to my madness! Looks like all our friends want ice cream. Yeah. Of course they do, little Willie. But what should we do first? Buy the big one. <laughs> oh, well, if it's the big one Danny wants, Mr. Bird, well, I'd recommend one of my delicious Frosty Freeze fruit drinks. Oh, that's a good idea, little Willie. They come in eight exciting flavors, and they're good for you, too. In fact, I think I'm going to have one right now. Why don't you tell the boys and girls a little doc doc joke while I enjoy this fabulous new 79 cents drink sensation? <laughs> okay, boys and girls, who wants to hear a knock knock joke? I do, I do, I do. All right, knock knock. Who's there? <gasps> uh oh. I said, who's there? What's the matter, Bird? Don't you recognize one of your old vendor buddies? I used to drive a rig just like this. Of course, look a little worse to wear. See, I just spent the last two years of my life riding in prison. But you should remember that. You put me there. I remember, William. You were trimming your profits, selling your inventory on the side. You were stealing. Hurry it up, butthead. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> He's absolutely right, kids. Uh, I got what I deserved. Hey, and to show you what a sport I am, I'll even take something to go. Let's see. You got anything in uh, butternut? Nope. Butter brickle. Nope. Buttermilk? Nope. I do have butterscotch. Fine. Make it two. Mm. Can you break this? Certainly. I do hope you don't harbor any hard feelings, William. I mean, what's done is done. <laughs> Gee, you're a smart man, Bird. I only wish I'd have come and talked to you sooner. Mm. Hey, kid. Mm -hmm. Eat up. Loser. Surprise. Hey. Thanks. You'll get yours tomorrow, bird. Billy, he's just an old puppet, man. I don't care if he can pull monkeys out of his ass with a hairpin. I want payback! Well, sure, Billy, anything you say. I mean, you done hard time. <laughs> Damn. Oh, here, hell, have mine. Come on, take it. I lost my taste for this stuff. Short pants. Panic! Now be old bird just pulled in. And where? 
And where is little Tom, huh? Huh? Uh, he said that he had to go over to 41 and pick up a stock transfer. What? And who authorized that? District Super. Oh, God damn it! Damn him. How am I supposed to keep things running smoothly around here? But all I'm left with is you two, you, you knuckleheads. But you should know that this bird is not a man who likes to be kept waiting. Been that way for 15 years. When Mr. Bird has a scheduled pickup, he arrives on time. And he expects the same courtesy in return. That's something that we call good old-fashioned values. You know, you boys could learn a thing or two from Mr. Bird. God. Oh, I think we know all we need to know about Mr. Bird. Ain't that right, boys and girls? Hell's bells, Billy! Is that you? Scooter, how you been? Good. Good day, Miss Profunda. And good day to you, Mr. Bird. I'll have your order ready in a jiffy, but bear with me. I'm a man short today. Oh, oh, no problem. So, Mr. Bird, are we going to have the pleasure of seeing you at the Vendor Awards this year? Oh, uh, this year. Oh, I'm afraid not, Miss Profunda. Well, it sure would be a welcome change to see you there in person. It's funny, but uh, <clears throat> I just purchased... A lavender pantsuit. Mm. And it would look mighty snazzy next to a fine gentleman like yourself. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Profunda, but I'm not much for such frivolous functions. Oh, me neither. Let's say we just blow it off and have a nice quiet dinner alone together. Oh, you know, I make the best potato chip and green bean casserole you ever no, I, tasted. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. Fine. I'm not upsetting you, am I? I said fine! It'll be $156. $156. Yes, that's what I said. Here we go. Now you get it? Now you see what I'm talking about? We get him in here where nobody's gonna see us, and then we do the dirty deed. It's an extra 500 in cash, easy. You didn't have to break Cooter's nose, Billy. Virgil, the guy's an idiot. Forget no, about him. No, he's not. He's smart, Billy. He really is. Like one time he asked me who'd win in the fight. Darth Vader, Robocop, and the Monsters, and I thought Darth Vader would win, but Cooter, he'd done like a whole bunch of research about it. We him. shut up! Fuck you, stupid as he is! Oh, shit. Virgil! Virgil, come on, don't do this to me. All right, when Grafunder walks back to her office, Bird's De Niro, what are you gonna do? Oh, shit. Virgil! You're gonna wait till she pops that safe open, then you're gonna step in behind her, right? Right? Then you're gonna keep her there nice and quiet while I take care of Bird. You got it? Virgil, please. We don't have time for this shit right now. I need you on this one. No, you don't. Come on, yes, I do. No, you don't need We're a team. You don't even yeah, like me. Are. You're I always like you. yelling at me and you're hitting me and stuff. No, and you, you got just... that all wrong, baby brother. Don't you get it? Don't you see? It's not me. It's them. Who? Them, everybody. Everybody out there saying the DeLuca brothers are shit. Screw them. They're garbage. They're scum. Who's saying that? Everybody, Virgil. Everybody. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cops, bankers, lawyers. Even Graf under. Virgil! I'm running a bit late. All right, all right. Hold your horses. Lazy jerk. Can't even load his own truck. <laughs> Why should that change? Been that way for 15 years. Virgil! I hate her. So do I, bro. But we're outnumbered. You and me's all each other's got. I'm a harder, Billy. I'm a harder for you. That'll show them. No, 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 no. You just follow the plan. Yeah, but I want to. I'm a harder, Billy. Okay, do what you gotta do. Give her a titty twist or two. But use your head. Okay, Billy. Okay, sure. Virgil! Virgil! All right. All right, go, go. Stumbling around like you haven't got a brain in your head. Go get Cooter in the two of your load birds truck. Hurry up! That jerk's got a stick up his ass about prompt attention. 
son of a bitch. Ow! <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of knocking? Oh, wipe that stupid smile off your face. Why do you think that's funny, huh? You know, people have been, have been crippled for falls less than that. Billy says, uh, I gotta keep you here. Yeah, what's he got to do with anything? A stupid idiot. Hope your slimeball brother rots in prison. Let's have some service out here. Hop to it, people. Mr. Thunder! Come on. Get out of the truck. Shit! What happened? Where's Graf Thunder? I, Billy, I didn't like you said. Mr. Thunder! Tell me what you did. Tell me what you did, exactly. Billy? Oh. Oh, Billy, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Billy, I didn't mean it. <laughs> Miss Grafunda! Stay here! Come on, let's get that safe! Move it! No. 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 Oh no, she closed the safe! Please tell me you took the money out. No, I didn't take it out, Billy. You said you'd do it. That's the plan. <laughs> Freaking murder one and we didn't get shit. Billy, what about the puppet man? Oh. He still got money, don't he? He said he had 500 bucks, easy. Yeah. The puppet man. Bird, we want it all, and we don't mean 31 flavors. Yeah! No, no, please, spare me. It wasn't my idea to report you. I tried to talk him out. Freeze! Enough of this crazy shit. Show him, Bird. Show him we got ways of making him talk. Right, Billy! You fucking idiot. Oh. Wouldn't tell us where the money was, would he? <laughs> Is he gonna tell us now? Huh? Is he? Is he? You fucking retard! Oh shit! Just find the money, okay? You check the bedroom! Oh, I'll search the rest of the house! Do it!
ice cream. How fucking original! Virgil! Get in here! You gotta see this! Virgil! Hey, Virgil! You just couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? No! You're dead! I warned you. No! Virgil! It's just you and me, William. And it ain't over yet. <laughs> it's payback time! No! No! Yes, yes. That's it, isn't it? I'll bet you and your brother were real close. Uh, uh, fuck you! Let me tell you about my brother. Well, we were close too. Until he died. Uh, uh, In fact, we're still uh, close. Uh, uh, Look. Kind of like a bond, isn't it? Kind you can't easily walk away from. Uh, yeah, what do you mean? Brother Earl, he wasn't quite a social butterfly, but when he was doing Little Willie's voice, he was one hell of an ice cream salesman. <laughs> I'm really gonna miss him. Go to hell, you freak! You look first. <laughs> They can blow me. And you smell too. <laughs> you hear that, Earl? The kid says we suck. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. And we smell. Go figure. Shame about Billy and Virgil, but you know what they say, kiddies. Two deads are better than one. <laughs> and as for Bird, he stayed in the ice cream business and did very well. Everyone loves Ben and Scaries. <laughs> well, I gotta get back to my practice. Next week we're playing the Washington Dreadskins. 45, 22, 33, hot, hot. You idiot! I didn't call for a handoff! <laughs> I tell you, ladies and germs, that ghoul friend of mine makes me so crazy. She told me she thought she'd look good in something long and flowing. So I threw her in the Mississippi! And how about that Ernest Hemingway, always shooting his mouth off? Ooh. Hello? Anybody? I know you're out there, folks. I can hear you bleeding. Is this on? Hmm. I know what this crowd wants. A little slay on words. Maybe a couple of nasty fright gags? Something along the lines of tonight's nasty nugget. It's a little tale about marriage, or if you prefer, about wife and death. I call it Two for the Show. So I get up and I say, hey, screw making a lot of stupid product improvements that nobody cares about. You know what I'm saying here? I mean, why spend all that money? When for nothing, we can find ways to sell what's there to all those markets 
but it never thought of buying our stuff in the first place. I mean, that, that is brilliant. And still, I'm catching flack from morons like, like Quimbin. I mean, this dickhead thinks that just because he went and commissioned some goddamn feasibility study, that everyone should back off, you know? I mean, like the whole thing was his idea in the first place. I mean, can you believe this guy? So anyway, I said to Quimby, look, you asshole, I'm gonna fight you on this. I'm gonna fight you all the way to the goddamn board of directors if I have to. And you know what he said? He said, I don't care. So I said to him, okay, fine, pal, be that way, because one of these days, I'm gonna be a vice president, and when that day comes, I'm gonna squash you like the insect that you are. Mm, this is really good. You should have seen the look on his face. And then, oh, 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 I forgot to tell you, there's a, there's a big cocktail party Sunday afternoon. I know, I know, you hate these weekend things, but this one is really important. I have something to say to you, Andy. And you know what? I, I, I'd like you to try harder to be more social. You know what I mean? It's not about liking people or not liking people. You know what I mean? I'm leaving you, Andy. You know, if you want, I'll even, I'll make a list of things for you to talk about. That way you won't, what? I said I'm leaving you. I want a divorce. You what? All you care about anymore is work. I want passion. I want hot sex on a white sand beach. I want to have a little fun and adventure while I'm still young enough to enjoy it. All right, all right, all right. What's this really about? What, you want me to increase your allowance? Is that it? I don't <laughs> want money, Andy. I want out. If you want to know the truth, I've been having an affair. An affair? I'm in love. And I can't tell you how great it feels. We're running away together and there's nothing you can do about it. Who is he? It's nobody you know. I want the name. Why? What are you gonna do, squash him like an insect? You're not the man I married, Andy. And if you are, I didn't know it. Either way, the thought of spending the rest of my life with you is just too damn depressing. If anybody wants me, I'll be in Chicago. Okay, okay, you're serious. I can see that now, but, but look, you gotta work with me on this, okay? I'm not negotiating with you, Andy. I don't want anything except a life. So what are you gonna do? You're just, you're just gonna walk out on me? The way I see it, Andy, you walked out on me years ago. When was the last time we made love? Can you even remember? Don't do this to me, Emma. You know what kind of schmuck I'm gonna look like? That's what really bothers you, isn't it? Well, let me put your mind to rest. You already look like a schmuck, because you are a schmuck. Schmuck? Who's a schmuck? Huh? Good! Bitch! You want passion, Emma? How's this? Police department. Uh huh. Are you sure it was a scream? That's right. You're absolutely right. You know what? I don't care anymore, and I'm tired of talking to. To hell with me? Uh, no, to hell with you! Well, right. But, but you're sure it was a scream? Mm-hmm. You say they would Glen Apartments. Do you know which unit? The Conways. Okay, we'll send someone over. Shit. And there I was thinking I'd get some paperwork done tonight. Hey, could you and your wife argue a little more quietly? Yeah, we'll work on it. What was that call just now? Uh, some woman. Says she heard a fight next door, and then a scream, and then nothing. Did I hear the name Conway? Yeah. They in Wood Glen, uh, Unit 402? As a matter of fact, you know? Don't think so. Wait, what are you doing? I'm on it. I want to see what this guy looks like. What is it with you? Your shift ended over an hour ago. You're supposed to be going on vacation tomorrow with your wife? I said I was going fishing. I didn't say anything about taking my wife.
Open up, police department. Uh, I'll, I'll be there in a minute. I'm Officer Fine. I, uh, got a call from one of your neighbors who said they heard a scream. Mind if I come in? No, not at all. A scream? Really? Is your wife here? No, she left. Uh, actually, for good. We had an argument. I guess that's what my neighbor... Uh, which neighbor did you say it was? I didn't. Did you go to a friend's house? Someplace we can reach her? Actually, she's on her way to Chicago. Chicago? Yeah, she has family there. Look, officer, you know how it is. We had a fight, it got loud, she packed the bag and she left. What's the deal with this? Oh, I, um, caught myself shaming. Mm-hmm. Mind if I look around? No, not at all. Uh, it's like I said, I, I cut myself shaving. We keep the towels in the trunk. You go to high school around here? Oh, no, I didn't. Did your wife? No, we, we uh, moved here from Chicago about five years ago. Thanks. It's the bubble bath, are you? Yeah, you'd, uh, you'd be amazed how relaxing they are. Especially after a long day. So when your wife gets to Chicago, I'd like you to have her give us a call. I'll do that, officer. The minute I hear from her. Thanks for talking to us. Oh, uh, when the other guys get here? Other guys? Yeah, standard procedure bullshit. Just tell them I was here already. And, uh, of course, they'll probably want to look around for themselves. That's what we pay them for. It's been nice talking to you. You'll be making that trip to Chicago after all, honey. Passenger C1. Passenger C1, please come to Bay Area. Hey, you got sir. Hi, can I help you, sir? Yeah, I want to book this through to Chicago. Fill this out for me, please. Train number 311 from New York City, now arriving at platform 6. Train number 311 from New York City, now arriving at platform 6. All done? Yes. Thank you very much. Show that when you get to Chicago and you're all set. You have a nice trip, sir. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. I'm going to be fine, all right? Don't worry about it. Mr. Conway. Officer Fine, I was at your apartment earlier this evening. Oh, right. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> That's the point. Do a little plain clothes work. You uh, going somewhere? Yeah, I am. Um... Hey, mister. Mister, that trunk you're taking to Chicago, you forgot to fill out your name and address. And I tell you, if these things get lost, they get lost for good. 
There's no way they trace it back to you. Here you go. Thank you. You know, it's a funny thing, officer, but the, just after you left, uh, my wife called. And she got to Chicago, and we made up. So now I'm going to Chicago to meet her. Like a second honeymoon. Right. That's nice. Might want to think about boarding now, sir. Your train's going to leave as soon as I get these bags on. You know, he's right. Right. Hey, come on. I'll walk you. You're my best to Chicago, huh? train gets in Chicago around 6 a.m. For luck. <laughs> Long time no see, huh? You going to Chicago? Yep. In case I'm working on it. I can't really talk about it. I can't tell you how much I like happy endings. I mean, in my line of work, things don't always turn out so good. You're a very lucky man. What did you and your wife fight about in the first place? Oh, um... Well, she said I wasn't paying enough attention to her. Is that right? Hmm. My wife's the exact opposite. Thinks I pay too much attention to her. You know what I mean? Well, that's nice, if you have the time. Well, you gotta make the time. Thing is, what's a guy supposed to do when his lady just isn't interested? I don't know. What, what do you do? I'm asking you. I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe marriage is the problem. People can be together too long, you know. I mean, take me. I, I've known my wife since high school. Can I ask you a personal question? I've, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. I mean, it's not like you're under oath or anything. Oh, sure. Let's say you're going to murder your wife. How would you do it? I'm not a murderer. Oh, come on. You tell him you never thought about killing your wife? We all have. Hey, lighten up, will you? I'll tell you what. I'm going to tell you how you kill your wife, okay? Well, you don't look like a shooter, and you're not the stabbing type. It's a bad idea anyway, from a cop's point of view. I mean, that blood just spatters in all the strangest places. Places you wouldn't even think of when you're trying to clean up afterwards. Look, I, I'm, I love my wife. I got it. I think you'd strangle your wife with your bare hands, maybe. In a moment of rage. Am I getting warm? You know, I haven't had anything to eat today. So if you'll excuse me. I'll keep an eye on your seat for you. looks good. What is that, the meatloaf? You know, it's funny, but when you said you were going to get something to eat, I got hungry, which is weird because I, I usually get travel sick, you know? I end up throwing everything up. That smells so good. You, you mind if I taste a little bit of it? Mmm, that is good. I think I'm going to have that. Unless you're not going to eat yours. Hey, thanks. I don't know why I'm so chatty with you. It's strange, but I feel like we have a lot in common. What's wrong? You look a little pale. How much of this stuff did you eat? I'm fine. See that guy back there? Now, does he seem like the kind of guy who's running $5 million worth of drugs? 
drugs? You see, the airlines ain't safe anymore. You know, they got the metal detectors and shit. So now these guys, they're running drugs on the rails. That guy, this train, that's the case I'm working on. Really? That's what you've been working on? Amazing, isn't it? Nothing sacred to them scumbags. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, uh, no, no, no. It's just, I mean, you know, running drugs on a, a train. I mean, it just, it just seems so stupid. <laughs> you know, it's like, who would have thought it, you know? Mm. Oh, how long have you been working on this? Oh, long time. Very long time. But today's a big day. Yeah? Mm -hmm. See, what that guy doesn't know is a whole bunch of FBI agents are going to be getting on at Peoria. FBI? Really? And they're going to go through this train inch by inch before we get to Chicago. Every car, every nook, every cranny, every bag. Took weeks just to get the goddamn search warrants. All the bags? All of them. T minus 22 minutes and counting. You know, I think there is something wrong with that meatloaf. I gotta, I gotta get some air. Excuse me. Like I told you, I just needed some air. Peoria, right on time. Can I tell you something? You made a real bad mistake with the ring. The ring? The high school ring. I mean, maybe it's a little different for you big city types, but out here, high school rings still mean something. Marysville High, class of 77. I still wear it with pride. And when I give one of these things to someone, it means something. You see, I think someone gave that ring to your wife. And I don't buy for a second that she'd leave it behind. You're the guy that's been having an affair with my wife. What exactly are you going to find when we open up your trunk? You're not going to find anything. I doubt that. Go to hell. You want to see what's in my trunk? Come on. I'll show you. Fine. These are your FBI guys. I lied. You're the case, asshole. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to break your heart. Ooh, go ahead. Break it. That is your trunk, right? Yeah, that's my trunk, and that's the ID card I filled out. He saw me do it. You know, I, I, I don't know what I do with that key. Open it up. No problem. Thank you. That, that, that just can't be. Dead body hacked to pieces in your trunk? Seems pretty clear to me. That's not my wife. This is in my trunk. I threw mine off the train. You're full of shit. I was with you the whole time. You never left my side. He's lying. Why don't you tell him about the affair you were having with my wife? 
And about the ring that you gave her. That ring under your bed was a woman's ring. It was my wife's. My wife gave it to your wife when they started seeing each other. That's my wife in your trunk. Like you didn't know. Admit it! You found out your wife was leaving you for another woman, you went berserk! Decided to get some revenge. That's why you murdered my wife, isn't it? No, that's not true. What are you saying? That you didn't kill anybody? No, I, I mean, yes, I killed my wife. Now, where's her body? It's in the trunk. I threw out the drain. You saying you killed them both? No, no. I, I you didn't. lying, sack of shit. You better get your story straight, pal. Juries have a habit of frying perjurers. Now, you murdered my wife, and that's a fact. Now, get out of my sight before I kill you. No, no. He's lying. You set me up. He set me up. He set me up. What a crazy son of a bitch. Do you think maybe he killed them both? Nah. His wife left him. She was on a flight to Cancun. We checked it out this morning. I don't know what's worse. To find out your wife was cheating on you or to find out someone snuffed her. I tell you what. They both suck. That's an express home. Runs through here in an hour or so. Who wants to get your ticket? No, 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 no. I think I'm going to rent me a car. I need to take some time. All right. Life can be such a grind. You know, Emma, you don't look so bad for a woman who's been hacked up and thrown off a train. Barney's my kind of guy. He comes up with a plan, but it's Andy who has to hatch it. <laughs> I guess it's true what they say. Better dead than wed. Hmm. Time for my finish. Now that's what I call bombing! Take my life, please! <laughs> Freight court is now in session. Will the defendant please approach the bench? You stand accused of watching too much tales from the crypt. Do you understand the charge? Neither do I. But I'll tell you this. If convicted, you'll receive a stiff sentence. You may even do a little horrid time. How do you bleed? All right, then. Let the trial begin. Our first piece of evidence is a tale about a couple of college boys who are about to undergo a little trial in terror of their own. In a writ of habeas corpses, I call. House of Horror. Excuse me, Honorable President Crandall, sir. This unworthy pledge wishes to clean that portion of the floor which is under your glorious shoes. All right, just hurry it up. Arling! Hey, Arling, you turdball. Didn't I tell you to clean this section of the floor over here? Yes, sir, grand and glorious Pledge Master Wilton, sir. Well, isn't that dog shit I see on it? Yes, it does appear to be canine fecal material, sir. Well, how do you think he got there? As a direct result of my own sins of worthlessness and incompetence, sir. Waters? Henderson? 
This don't concern you. Get back to work before I paddle your asses. What are you waiting for, Pledge? Clean it up before I make you use your tongue. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, Arling. You forgot to kiss the soles of my shoes. What's the matter, Arling? You waiting for another alternative? Quit. Quit. Go up on the wall of shame. You never become a member, and we haze you as long as you go to this school. That's what happened. This punk asshole quitter, D.D. DeWitt. DeWitt chickened out on a test of courage. He didn't have it, so he quit. Only we never let up on him. We drove him crazy. We made his life a living hell. DeWitt ended up degraded, debilitated, and defunct. He had a nervous breakdown. It was great. One of those things that makes me really proud to be a gamut adult. My shoes, Arlen. <laughs> That's gross. Remember, kiddies, tonight's your test of courage. It'll make or break you. You know, I'm thinking I'd like to break him. Yeah. Break his neck. Wait for him one night behind the door. When he comes in, wham! Crack him in the head with the baseball bat. <laughs> Fuck the baseball bat. I'd use a shovel. Yeah. Or an axe. <laughs> Or a chainsaw. Yeah. I just want this all done with. See, the only thing that's keeping me going is... Pledges! Don't make a brother get up to answer that door! Why, y'all didn't have to get so dressed up just for little old me. Arlie. What's a pledge supposed to do in the presence of a lady? Oh, welcome to Gamma Delta Omega. Pledge Arling at your service, miss. Just call me Mona. My, you're quite a gentleman. I like that. Pat and Mona, I'm Tex Crandall, president of the house. What can we do for you? You see, our sorority, Delta Omega Alpha, just opened a chapter on campus. And we'd like to affiliate with the fraternity for various social events. Although I assume an organization such as yours already has a sister house? Well, uh, actually, no. We've been uh, on probate, I mean, uh, reviewing our situation. We may consider an affiliation provided certain standards are. Y'all want to be certain we're not some doghouse, right? Well, how about three or four y'all come over for dinner tonight? and meet the sisters up close and person. Mona, could you give us a second here, please? This is too good to be true. It's got to be one of those sorority initiation stunts. They get a bunch of guys over, and they make fools of them. It's happened before. Let me flesh this out. Mona, we'd love to. Unfortunately, tonight's our final pledge ritual in an off-campus locale. Oh, I'm Les Walton, pledge master. It's my job to make men of these boys. Now, I always thought making men out of boys was a woman's job. Well, perhaps you'd like to volunteer your services. I'm sure the pledges wouldn't mind. Mona, I apologize. That was rude and insensitive of me. However, since we can't send any brothers to your house tonight, Perhaps you'd like to uh, come check out our little ritual. Oh, we wouldn't think of interfering in one of your sacred rituals. Well, if you were interfering, we wouldn't have invited you. Nevertheless, we thank you for your invitation, and we wish you much luck on finding your brother house. Well, 
If you're certain we won't be interfering, we'll be there. That's what's been keeping me going. We're almost there, y'all gonna make it? Uh, we'll make it, sir. And we know Wilton's pushing you kind of hard. Like we said before, he's not exactly the type of man we approve of. Then why do you let him do this? Paul Dix. About six years ago, Gamma Delta House came close to set ship on a cheating scandal. Wilton dug up some dirt on the Dean. Bingo, no more scandal. Wilton decided he liked the job of Pledge Master, so he's had it ever since. Wait, for six years? How come he hasn't graduated? Guys like Wilton never graduate. End of the line, kiddies! Pledges walk from this point on! Waters, recite the history of the old coffer house. It was owned by an, o an old hermit with the black cloak and hood who had this hacking cough. You could hear him a mile away. They called him the coffer, and his house, coffer house. Waters, swallow that gum. Henderson, continue! When the Alpha Sigma Sigma frat house burned down, the mayor, who had been a member, swindled the coffer out of his own house and gave it to the fraternity. The coffer then cursed the house and killed himself. Harley, wrap it up! A year later, nine members of Alpha Sigma who lived in the house, including the mayor's son, were murdered with an axe by someone wearing a black hood with a hacking cough. The house was condemned. That was 1933. Ever since then, people say the coffer's ghost is still in there, making sure nobody's in his house. They say you can still hear him coughing. Blindfold's off, gentlemen! We're here. So here's the deal, Pledges. You each have a flashlight. You can all see that row of windows there. You go in, run up to the second floor window. Flash your light three times. Climb the ladder to the attic. Flash three times in the attic window. Then wait there till I call you back down. If you make it, you're in. Sound easy? Well, the joint's haunted. And Mr. Axe Murderer's ghost doesn't like visitors. Henderson, you're first. Go. See you boys in the attic. Good luck, boys. All of us sisters are counting on you. We just love fraternity men. So, Mona, where's the rest of your sisters? That can't be all of them. I don't know if they'll all make it. Too bad. Me and Sparks here rigged up some great gags. They're gonna miss a good show. Caught him at the hospital lung cancer ward, then pumped him up on the synthesizer. Gonna kill me. You asshole. 
You're supposed to be the ghost of an axe murderer, not a chainsaw massacre. Artistic license. Yeah, just shake in that effect, Sparks. One down, one to go. Jesus, that sounded like Henderson. Nah, they just got the place wired for sound. We'll see me in the attic window any minute now. I thought I told him to bag that chainsaw. Wilton, why's it taking him so long to get up there? Guess he just ain't Gamma Delta material. Waters, let's see if you're worthy. Move your ass. You show him, Tiger. Waters! There's somebody on the second floor with a cloak and an axe. Are you shitting me, Arling? No, man, I swear to God, I just saw him. <laughs> Henderson, you up there, buddy? Henderson? Is that you? Strawberry jelly. Oh, those fuckers. <laughs> Shit, it's real. Oh, oh, sick, Wilton. Very fucking sick. Wilton must have wrestled from med school. I told you to lose that chainsaw. My system must be screwed up. That, that's supposed to be a scream. That's one like it. Two sounds are ones. You can't do that. What's the story, Wilton? Why isn't there any sign of those pledges? Because they're fucking with us, that's why. Laying low, trying to make me look bad. Ain't that right, Arling? I don't know, but I don't like it. Yeah, well, like it or not, you're going in there. Or I'm making it my business to ride your ass till you're defunct. Look, I saw somebody in that window with an axe. I'm not going up to the attic. Fuck! <laughs> Hell, Arling! You're so chicken, I bet you couldn't make it to the second floor. In fact, I get a hundred bucks saying you won't. How about it, kid? Henderson and Waters both did it. A hundred bucks would buy us one terrific dinner date. To the second floor. You're on. Good. I'll get your hundred bucks and I'll run your ass into the ground. Simona. Does that dinner date apply for me, too? If you win, but you won't. I'm sure that young man will rise to the occasion. Sparks. I didn't do it. I thought you did. <laughs> hey, we gotta fry this little twerp or it's gonna cost me a C note. Fried.
Waters? Henderson? guys Stupid mask we rigged. Did I call this or what? We're talking wall of shame here, guys. Mr. Gutless Wonder of 1993. No! It wasn't a dummy. It was a ghost. It was upstairs. I saw it. Bullshit. The whole thing's bullshit, including the legend. Pledge master secret. The whole thing was made up years ago and printed in the school paper so pledges could research it for initiations. It never happened. There's no coffer. There never was. And Arling's just the wuss. You owe me a hundred bucks. And it's buying me a date with Mona. She likes men, not whips. Ain't that right, sweetheart? All right, Will, and call down the rest and pledges so we can hit the trail. Waters! Henderson! This is your grand and glorious pledge master here. I'm in the house. I want you to come down now. Weren't you supposed to go up to the attic and bring him down yourself? Wasn't that the deal? So it's an ambush. I go up there and those two jump me. You had a plan all along. Well, I ain't falling for your bullshit, Arling. Not for this, Wilton. What's the matter, Wilton? You afraid of getting bushwhacked by a couple of dweeb pledges? <laughs> <laughs> can't take them, Green Horns? Les, I thought you were a man. Of course I can take them. Watch this. <laughs> hey, hey Sparks, cut that out! It wasn't me. I, I already yanked the wire. Uh, Sparks, maybe you better come with me, uh, I don't remember how we rigged everything up here. Hey, you're on your own. Me, I'm afraid of ghosts. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll go up first and you, uh, you guys follow right behind me. Us brothers gotta stick together, right? <laughs> Hey, come on! There's a difference between being chicken and being stupid. Oh, yeah? How would you know? I'll remember this. I'm gonna pay back each and every one of you. I guess I proved that you're not Gamma Delta material either. <laughs> and about those other pledges, I put a note on the attic door telling them not to signal or do anything until they heard the password, happy birthday. And I signed the note, Les Wilton. <laughs> Nobody does that to me! Let's go, girls. Mona! Wait! I won! You owe me a date! All right, Wilton, call down the rest of them pledges so we can all vamoose. Do it! 
Waters, Henderson, happy birthday. Now get down here. <laughs> Did you hear me? I said happy birthday, now move! <laughs> I swear to God, don't hit if you're fucking with me again. Hey, maybe they are gonna jump you. <laughs> Go up and get him, Wilton. Yeah, Go get him, or we're expelling your ass. The wit. <laughs> so it was you that rigged the arm? Arm? <laughs> what arm? This arm. Hey, no, it ain't mine. Oh my God, that's a pledge ring. It's Henderson's. Good Lord. Waters! Henderson! I'm gonna re bolt your asses, Finish! Waters! Anderson? Welcome to Delta Omega Alpha Pledge Night. <laughs> we just love fraternity boys. You see, DOA is an all ghoul sorority. <laughs> to become Delta Omega material now. Dinner. See, Les? You get your dinner date after all. And I'm just so famished for a man. Remember pledges. Eat every bite or you'll end up on the wall of shame. <laughs> costs an arm and a leg, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Still, I think you'd have been happy to know he was part of one last food fright. Ah, I see we've reached a verdict. Members of the Gory, do you fiend the defendant guilty or not guilty? What do you know? A hung jury.